Welcome to this lecture about two of the six parameters determining thermal comfort. Today we are discussing the impacts of air temperature and air velocity. Air temperature is the most evident of the parameters determining comfort. Air temperature is the everyday term designing the dry bulb temperature of air. It is what a thermometer is measuring when placed in the shadow. In the picture you see such a thermometer with a double scale in degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius. In this course we always use degree Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, well, why is this air temperature called the dry bulb temperature? This is because there is generally some water vapor contained in the air and this vapor can condensate under certain conditions. The dry bulb temperature is the temperature of the air when there is no condensation of water vapor on it. We will come back to that in another lecture. This is just air as we know it in our daily lives when there is no fog. We have seen in another lecture that heat losses or gains between human body and surrounding air are determined by an equation accounting for body surface area corrected by a clothing factor FCL, thermal resistance of clothing RC, convection coefficient between clothing and air, and finally the temperature difference between air and skin. So the body thermal balance is very much dependent on the air temperature. In general, a comfortable indoor air temperature is in the range 18 to 28 degrees C. However, this range must be seen with respect to the other comfort parameters and with regional and seasonal preferences. In a fitness room or a sports hall, temperature preferences are much lower, around 16 degrees. This is beca because of the high metabolism during sport activities. More heat must be lost by the body and this is more easy at lower temperature. Also in corridors, a lower temperature is accepted because of the short passing time. In northern European countries, an indoor temperature of 20 degrees C in winter is considered comfortable, while it will be considered as much too cold in summer. In summer, temperatures above 24 degrees are considered much, much more comfortable. In hot countries, the indoor temperature preferences may be higher, but also sometimes lower when people are used to low temperature air conditioning. Because people wear different clothing in winter and summer, Seasonal variations of the indoor temperature are considered more comfortable than keeping a constant temperature all over the year. An additional advantage of varying the temperature are energy savings. A lower indoor temperature in the cold season means less eating energy use. A higher indoor temperature in the hot season means less cooling energy. During the heating season, it is very important to use the lower boundary of the comfort range, while in the cooling season, the higher boundary should be used. Most national building codes give requirements about minimal and maximum temperatures to be achieved in buildings. One warning is on its place here. Our daily experience of air temperature may lead to misunderstandings. Looking at this picture, most people would say that it is much cooler in the shadow of the tree than in the sun. But is it true? Think of it like this. There are continuous air movements and there is no chance that the air has time to heat up quickly when arriving in the sun or to cool down quickly when arriving in the shadow. So the air temperature is identical in shadow and sun. What you feel while being in the shadow is the air temperature. What you feel while being in the sun is the total of the air temperature and the radiation you receive from the sun. The same happens with the, thermo with the thermometer. If you put it in the shadow and wait for a while, the thermometer material will take the temperature of the air, and so you will measure the air temperature. However, if you put it in the sun, 
the thermometer material will take a much higher temperature because it also absorbs solar radiation. So the temperature measured will have little to do with the actual air temperature. So to measure air temperature, always put the thermometer in the shadow and far away from any additional source of temperature, like a radiator or the sun, that could influence the measurement. We will come back to that in a lecture about radiant heat. Let's look now at air velocity. Air velocity and turbulence are responsible for draft. Draft may be nice at hot indoor temperatures and helps feeling comfortable even when it is too hot. Draft may come from open windows, like on the picture left, or from air conditioning and ventilation grills, like on the right picture. On the picture in the middle, which is in a hot place in China, openings in the facade have been realized in order to ensure enough air circulation and velocity to help cooling the body. The coefficient alpha i in the heat transfer formula below depends very strongly on the air velocity. The higher the velocity, the higher alpha i, and therefore the more heat will be removed from the body as long as the indoor air temperature is below 34 degrees, the skin temperature. Otherwise, it would contribute to warm up the body. However, also at temperatures above 34 degrees, air velocity will help removing sweat on the skin and therefore we still have a cooling action. At cold temperatures, draft also increases the heat transfer rate from body to air, but will be experienced as extremely unpleasant this time. This may happen in colder climates and relates to the unwanted infiltration of cold outside air through cracks in the building construction, like not well closing windows or doors, see picture on the left. It can also come from poor quality ventilation grills when mechanical supply ventilation is used and the valves are not distributing correctly air flows by which too cold air just vertically falls on the body. Even warm air with high velocity can be experienced as not very comfortable, as may happen with the heating valves in a car. See picture on the right. This figure shows the relationship between the two parameters we have studied during this lecture. On the x-axis, the air temperature. On the y-axis, the air velocity in meter per second. This diagram is for an office building with related activity, clothing and metabolism. It shows that in still air, a comfortable air temperature range is 18 to 23 degrees Celsius. The comfort feeling will be maintained up to an air velocity of 0.1 meter per second. If the air velocity is higher, the lower boundary of the temperature must be increased. At a velocity of 0.2 m per second, the air temperature should be above 21 degrees, otherwise people will feel too cold. The diagram also shows that at high indoor temperatures, 26 degrees for instance, thermal comfort can only be achieved if the air velocity is increased to 0.5 m per second. So, in general, Air velocities indoors should be kept below 0.1 meter per second during the cold season, but may be increased up to 0.5 during the hot season. For example, a desk fan increases the air velocity. It does not cool the air, but because of the increased air velocity, the heat transfer by convection between body and air increases, keeping the body cool. Such a fan also increases the turbulence of the air, which will be treated in another lecture. In this lecture, we studied both air temperature and air velocity. We saw that they both influence the heat transfer from body to air. As for the air temperature, or so-called dry bulb temperature, the broad comfort range is 18 to 28 degrees Celsius, sometimes reduced to 20, 24 to ensure even more comfort. The chosen temperature levels depend on the function of the building, which relates very much to the metabolic activity and the closing wall. During the heating season, it is very important to use the lower boundary of the comfort range, while in the cooling season, the higher boundary should be used to save energy. Air velocities should be reduced below 1 meter per second in winter, but can be increased up to 0.5 meter per second in hot condition. Thank you very much for your attention.